Hello there, channel members, friends, and followers from around the world. This is Q8 Pilot, your host for tonight's show. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be conducting a sort of a, a new perspective on the X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, uh, experience, if you will. This is not going to be a versus uh, sort of a stream, but rather it's going to be a... Uh, it's going to be really um, a look at both simulators. We're going to look at the pros and the cons. We're going to look at also the way forward for these simulators from my perspective, of course. So I'm going to provide you with my perspective, what I like about both simulators. It's not, again, it's not a fight <laughs> between the, the two, which is better, uh, but I'm going to attempt to show you all the good things and the bad things in both simulators. So uh, we have with us today Rand Cooley. This is a members only chat for this live stream. So I want to call Rand and Ed Mookin. Hello guys, welcome aboard. Glad to have you here. And what we're going to begin doing is we're going to be taking a look at Explain. Our agenda is to explore the entire user experience, the menus, the settings. And then of course, we're going to take a look at a short flight with some physics. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing for Microsoft Flight Simulator, highlighting uh, you know, the strong points of each and uh, the weak points, if you will. Um, so let's get started. One of the first thing I want to say about X-Plane 12 is that I love the user interface in X-Plane 12. It is very intuitive. It is very easy uh, on the eye uh, from, from a user experience perspective. I think it offers a lot. It is very user friendly without a doubt. From and you can go to all aspects of the simulator with a few clicks. So the number of clicks is very important for me. And I think that the guys at Lemonar Research have done a very good job really optimizing uh, the number of clicks to get to where you want. For example, this is the main menu of X-Plane. You can resume your flight. You can start a flight, save, load, and go to flight school. From the new flight menu, you have access to everything in one screen. This is something I have a lot of appreciation for, and it is a result of a lot of thought from Laminar Research. Here you have all your aircraft. Uh, you can also very quickly um, select uh, or filter you know, the, uh, we can select, for example, just the Laminar Research aircraft. This is the default aircraft that ship with Laminar, uh, with the uh, X-Plane 12. And you can also uh, configure your uh, current location. So where do you want to fly? We are currently, by the way, situated at 1 Sierra 2. And uh, Phil Norbit, hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Glad to have you here with us on this live stream. And uh, you can also access the weather. You can access the time of day and uh, from, from the airport menu or from the uh, airport name, you can also toggle the ICO code, IATA code, FAA code, city, state, uh, custom scenery and favorites. If you click on customize, one of the brilliant things in X-Plane is the fact that you can either start on the ramp or you can start on the runway. And from the runway, you can either start actually on the runway or uh, perform a three or 10 nautical mile approach from the runway to practice your landings. This is something I really like. Another thing I like is the fact that you're able to use the special starts in X-Plane. You can do a grass strip, dirt strip, gravel, seaplane start, helipad, and so on and so forth. Again, everything is very concisely designed Everything is put in one place. You don't really have to fiddle around and go to multiple screens to set things. Let's say that from this screen, you wanna uh, you know, change the settings. Simply click on the settings here and voila, you're here at the graphics where you can tweak your graphics and you can go to the network data output. You can select all the type of data that you want to show in the sim. Uh, this is the general uh, data output and also you can look at the data ref read and write. The joystick configuration, this is one of the strongest points in X-Plane is how to set up your experience, how to actually configure your devices. Not only can you see a visual representation, but for select devices, the most popular ones, you can actually highlight here and you can see exactly uh, on this side what's happening so if i move the control 
here on the hat switch, uh, you'll be able to see that uh, right here. As you can see, it highlights this entire section telling me this is everything to do with the hat switch. And then you can go here. This is eight, the pitch, uh, pitch trim up and so on and so forth. And this is true for anything that is connected to your, um, uh, to, your uh, to your computer. And the nice thing also is it's very easy to calibrate the devices. You can select the available devices from the drop down menu currently. I've removed some of the gear uh, just for testing purposes. So I have uh, the HOTUS uh, choice, uh, the throttle, throttle quadrant. And again, the same thing here. I love this fact uh, that um, Explain allows you to visually see what you're doing and it makes configuring your flight controls very easy. Another thing I really like about Explain settings and the way you set things up is the profile. Now the profile in, uh, for example, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, this option is also available. But what I do like about Explain is the fact that you can set the profile for all your controls and then assign that specific profile to the uh, aircraft. So if I go to manage profiles, you'll see that I have, for example, single engine, triple seven, whatever, tallest, twin engine. And then here, for example, I have the A350 assigned to the twin engine profile. This is very, very useful. And this is really something that Laminar has done very, very well. Another thing I really like in setting up Explain is adding the response curves. As you can see here, if I wanted to add a response curve, all I need to do is to uh, select the add response curve. And now I can visually change everything with my mouse. As you can see here, uh, I can also add the linear. Uh, so I can do a linear a response curve or I can do a cubic uh, linear curve. Uh, and you can also change the uh, interrupt mode. Uh, the, you can change uh, the values. So very fine and very granular details over those response curves. So this is another thing I really like. Setting up Explain, generally speaking, is a lot easier. Hello there, Niels. Welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you here with us. And uh, and uh, again, you can view the, this is again another very nice feature, is that you can view uh, the, uh, the flight control from uh, two different views. So you can look at the back and you can look at the front. This is very, very well done by, uh, by Laminar. Uh, calibration is again very easy. Uh, you can also go to the keyboard. Now, one of the things I also like, maybe it is not something that is for, uh, you know, for the users in general, but maybe more suitable for developers, um, is the fact that when you have a plugin installed for Explain, you can actually have different settings for that plugin and you can assign the controls to that plugin without having to fiddle around with the uh, sort of built in parameters of Explain. For example, uh, I have here, for example, X camera, X, uh, this is uh, everything from SRS, that's uh, Stick and Rudder Studios. And I have two plugins from this company, XATC Chatter, and I don't have currently anything assigned to the keyboard, but I have X camera, which I do have some keyboard uh, buttons assigned to it. Now, this is specific to this particular plugin. In, uh, for example, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, what developers tend to do is they actually try to go to a parameter, an in-sim parameter that is not being used and assign it something that they want. This is quite evident in uh, flying helicopters, uh, for example, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, or uh, for example, ProFlow, where you have to assign something to the help menu. Um, so this is, again, for uh, strictly from a developer perspective, but I think from a user perspective, it makes things very easier for us to set things up. All you have to do, for example, to say cancels transmission of missed approach is click here and then record the keystroke and then you're done. Uh, very, very nice. I really like how everything is set up in Explain. Now, one thing, uh, again, from the sounds, uh, you can, you know, uh, toggle the sounds. And this is an area where I think um, Explain, uh, by the way, the soundscape, the default soundscape in Explain is great. Uh, but the ATC is something, air traffic control is something that is still, after 
you know, X-Plane 10, 11, and 12, I feel that it's still lacking. Um, it is improved from the previous versions, but it's still very lacking in my view. You can select a couple of voices there, but that's an option or that's a, a feature in X-Plane 12 that I will probably never use. Yeah. From the general tab here, again, everything is so well laid out and very easy to understand. You can set the language of your simulator, uh, flight model, you can simulate blackout, redout, and hypoxia effects. Uh, very nice. Again, uh, x is very big on um, simulating realism in the sim. So all the situations that you can encounter in real life uh, are there for you to, to manipulate and toggle on and off. Um, removing flying surfaces when over speed and over G limits. Uh, that's again something I like. We're going to take a look at what we're going to do is we're going to crash this uh, Cessna 172 in a little while and we're going to see what happens. All right. So that's one of the things I really like is how the settings are, how you set things up. But also what I really like about x is the kind of settings you have for your aircraft. So if I click on the aircraft, everything is, if you go to the weight and balance, everything comes visually here for you. So you can toggle this between metric and uh, um, and Imperial units. Uh, the center of gravity you can change and you can see everything visually here. We'll give you the flight time. Uh, again, everything is, is available for you here if the aircraft is not equipped. So if your aircraft does not have a control panel, uh, kind of like the weight and balance in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it has a similar feature that you can do. Um, so I, I do like this feature in both sims. I think this is very useful. But what I do like a lot about um, x is the failures. Now, you can almost fail everything in x -Plane. You can fail, um, you know, you can do the, uh, you know, the runway lights. You can do a bird strike, uh, a microburst, smoke in the cockpit, uh, a brownout. You can do all the doors still open, external power still on, passengers, uh, you know, every fuel cap left off. All of these can be simulated uh, in, uh, in X-Plane. You can go to the systems, and as you can see here, you can fail any of these systems. And this is true to any aircraft equipped with these items. So it, the, the developers really, the only thing they have to do is map it to their aircraft, and they're good to go. A very good example of an excellent representation of the failure system in X-Plane is the Challenger 650. Um, that aircraft, uh, the, the level of detail in that aircraft is just incredible. And what the developer has done is actually use what's already available in X-Plane in order to show you visually how these failures work and what happens when you do fail them. If we go, for example, to the engines, uh, again, look at, you know, you, you, for a prop, you know, for a prop, you can do an engine drive shaft, uh, an engine seize one. And uh, of course, because this is a single engine aircraft that we have now, uh, the starter, again, there's one starter here, but if you load, for example, a 747, you'll have four engines that you can fail. And this is quite useful. And for, for those of you who are looking to actually train and um, create real world situations. Also, another nice thing in x is you can very easily search for the, uh, so if I type in here, for example, servos, you can see that I immediately get the systems and the autopilot, and now I can fail the autopilot system or the elevator, whichever part of the autopilot that I want to fail. And this is really commendable work by Laminar Research. The failure system in x is second to none. It is absolutely brilliant. So we are now here at uh, Darrington Municipal and the Cessna Skyhawk. There are a few things I'd like to show you uh, as well in, in the sim itself. Now, if we look here at, uh, at X-Plane, now the scenery is, again, is not photoreal. This does not look like real life without a doubt, but I would call it, uh, quote unquote, I'm gonna use Laminar's term here, plausible. So it is plausible. And I think what it does provide, it provides for a, a suitable environment for you to fly. 
it doesn't look immersive. Uh, it is immersive in a way. Uh, you do get the representation of seasons. You get uh, those 3D trees. Uh, the uh, This is, by the way, a default airport of Darrington Municipal. And if you look at the actual airport, the layout is actually as per real life. Uh, may, maybe not all the buildings are there, but this looks kind of like, uh, you know, Darrington Municipal Airport. The runway, without a doubt, is uh, is correct. So all the taxiways and the markings on the ground. And one thing I do really like a lot about X-Plane is the runway textures. Look at that. This looks really, really good. Even uh, in closer proximity, uh, you can see the details here. And this is all default. I'm not using anything. One thing I don't like is how crooked those lines are. This should be a nice curved line. I think there is a plugin that you can purchase that will fix this and will make these, uh, you know, perfect, uh, uh, perfect curves. But right now it doesn't look right uh, to me. Uh, another thing I do like in X-Plane is the night lighting. So let's switch to nighttime here. And here you can see the uh, beautiful night lighting uh, here. You can see that this is done quite well. You can see the headlamps and the brake lights and the, of the cars coming. Uh, you can see the street lights. You can see that you have different uh, street lights as well. You know, you've got your yellow and white lights. And uh, another thing I do like a lot also in X-Plane is the 3D water. Uh, let me go here and now you can see it here. Let me change the time of day again. And you can see here the 3D water is done quite well and it responds to changes in the weather. So um, overall, from, from the immersion perspective, uh, I think it does offer some really nice features, way, way better than the predecessor version of, uh, of X-Plane. Um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop into it. And by the way, we're gonna be doing the Cessna 172 and maybe the Cub uh, for the purpose of the comparison, because I wanted to use exactly the same aircraft without any add-on, uh, without any add-ons, and uh, we're probably going to turn off uh, XP Realistic. So let me turn it off, uh, so that you know I don't want to show you anything that is outside the sim today. Uh, we're just going to look at whatever the sim provides. Uh, now this is the Cessna 172 in Explain. Now from the visual perspective. I think it looks pretty good. The use of PBR materials is done quite well. Uh, the lighting engine and X-Plane is uh, something I really like. And uh, the uh, the aircraft, the 3D modeling of their default aircraft is done quite well in my view, uh, especially on this uh, Cessna, which is uh, an aircraft that lived through all iterations uh, of uh, X-Plane. So in my view, this is a, a very reasonable rendition, very authentic rendition of the Cessna 172. So let's go ahead and start it up and let's take a look at some of the features uh, that are uh, available. First, what you'll notice is the FMOD sounds here. Very nice sounds and they are quite distinct for the switches and the, uh, for example, the master battery switch is very different from, you know, the beacon light switch. And for a default aircraft, I think that's, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, not not bad. I would say not bad. It is a bit heavy on the frames, the Cessna, for some reason. I don't know why. But let's go ahead and set the mixture to full rich, crack the throttle a little bit, and let's start the aircraft. All right, so we have a good start, and we're going to turn on the avionics. Uh, nav lights can go on, taxi lights are on. We'll leave the strobes for the time being. Now, there are a few things I want to show you in the external view. All right, so now we have the aircraft with the engines running. If the engine sounds are too loud for you guys, please do let me know, I can bring it down. But now what I'd like you to point your attention to is what happened, we have the brakes set and I'm gonna apply maximum power. And let's take a note of what happens to the aircraft. Here we go. All right, now, this is quite something I quite like, is how the physics are modeled in X-Plane. Watch the area here and uh, the front, as well as the back, how the aircraft tips kind of forward. Look at that again, and look at the suspensions. Look at that. 
Now that is a very realistic behavior uh, of, of the aircraft. Now probably we're, uh, you know, the, the brakes are probably heating up, but that's okay, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to release the parking brake and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, by the way, the uh, in X-Plane, I've had no issues with my uh, J rudders. Uh, the tow brakes work just fine. I couldn't get them to work in Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I used uh, a keyboard mapping for my tow brakes. But let me show you one thing here. I'm going to hold the tow brake on one side. You can see how the, uh, the wheel is tilting. And now I'm going to start applying power. Now watch what happens. So I have the tow brake applied on that wheel, and that's what the aircraft does. All right. Again, notice when we hit the brakes how the suspension work, and that is something I really like a lot in X-Plane, how the aircraft behaves on the ground. All right, let me give it just a little more power before we lose the engines, and let's release the parking brake, and let's head over to the, uh, let's head over to the runway and take off. All right, so according to the windsock, we can depart uh, from the runway over there. <laughs> Whichever that runway is. All right, brilliant. And again, uh, default SESTA 172, no mods, no XP realistic, nothing. Today is just really default to explain. All right, let's taxi to the runway and we're going to depart. This is a very short runway, so I am going to uh, apply 10 degrees of flaps. All right, one thing that I also really like in x is the camera system. The camera system in x is very simple and uh, once you get used to it, you can use, by the way, the keyboard arrows to move left, right, up and down and you can use your mouse obviously to look around uh, but what I like is the fact that you can do a flyby hitting shift and two or shift and one which is something I've learned just recently you can do shift and four for the external view shift and five for the tower view and this is a chase view as well shift and six and you can do all sorts of things uh, with the uh, with the camera system Shift and 9 brings you back to the virtual 3D cockpit. And if you hit uh, control and any of the numpads, you can save the view. So um, you know, I've, I've actually removed these because I've set them to my X camera. But normally what you do is just hit control and one numpad one to save this view. You can then go to this particular view, for example, and do control two and it will save it. And then by hitting on the numpads, it will simply take you to the uh, that res the the preset that you've set. All right, we're coming up to the runway. Let's turn on the landing lights and strobe lights. All right, and let's switch to the external view. Now, one thing I do want to show you as well here. Let me set the brake here real quick, and I'm going to change the time of day because I want you to see the lights. Now, this is something that is reasonably done in x -Plane. However, I think Laminar still needs to <clears throat> do a little bit of more work to make the, uh, you know, the lights a little more realistic. That, you know, star-looking light is not very realistic in my view. Uh, things don't look like that in real world, but I do like the beacon. I like how it's rotate rotating. Uh, that's done quite well and look at those little taxi lights there. Uh, I mean it looks beautiful Looks just really very very nice So I do like that a lot in X-Plane. All right, we're good here. Let's go ahead and depart Parking brake is released and we're gonna give it a little power here Again, we are not using XP Realistic, uh, just so that because it's not, it's a plugin, it's an add-on. So uh, today we're just gonna look at what the SIM does and uh, without the interference of any plugins. Hey, John, loose parts. Hello, my friend. Welcome aboard. Ryan, how are you, my friend? Welcome aboard, guys. Glad to have you here. All right, let's line up here with the runway 
Uh, one thing that needs improvement uh, also in X-Plane uh, is the shadows. Uh, so the shadows uh, inside the cockpit do not look always very good. Um, in some situations they do, in some situations they don't. And so that is something I hope can be uh, resolved in the, uh, you know, in the days to come. All right. All right, let's go ahead and give it full power. And let's uh, depart uh, Darrington Municipal. We're going to do a few turns, maybe come back and land, or maybe we go to another airport. If you guys, by the way, uh, Osama Mohammed, hello, my friend, welcome aboard. If you guys want me to do something specific, uh, please do let me know. Right, 60 knots, rotate. Right, here we go. And again, I do not have any add-ons right now, no XP realistic, nothing like that. And uh, we just departed uh, Darrington Municipal. And here's one thing you really appreciate in x -Plane. Is this a flyby? This is a must-have in any simulator. <laughs> All right, you can retract the flaps. All right, you can see the immediate nose down when you retract the flaps. Again, this is something, uh, so the flight model, I'm not a qualified uh, pilot to uh, to, to tell you which flight model is more accurate, but based on my experience flying uh, in the real world, uh, I can tell you that uh, that the 172 in both Microsoft Flight Simulator and uh, X-Plane uh, behave very much like the real thing. Uh, They're both, I think, very well made, uh, and flight model-wise, and uh, both also from the 3D perspective, although I tend to like the visuals in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, a lot more than x to be completely frank. All right, so I'm going to ease off here on the power and the airport. Uh, again, you can see the nice representation of mountains, a plausible world in, uh, in x -Plane. And that's the uh, airport right there. So we're going to make a turn here and head back. But if you guys want me to go uh, somewhere else please do let me know we're more than happy to do that all right here we go again you can see here uh an attempt from lemonar to add some you know scratches uh the the reflections are not done very well in my view in explain they still need some work but overall not bad overall not bad so the concentration in microsoft in uh, explain is really on uh, the failures, the situation, the realism, the realism of flight, okay? So I think that's what they focus on, is the realism of the flight itself. All right, so one thing I do wanna show you is, uh, <coughs> what I do wanna show you guys is what happens if we bring this uh, Cessna nose down and we actually crash. So I'm gonna switch to the external view and there is a reason why I wanna show you this. Simply, I do not like doing that, by the way. I don't like crashing and things like that. But the reason I want to show you is what actually happens. So I'm going to just give it full power. And we're going to climb a little bit. All right. And then we're going to take the aircraft nose down and see what happens. Now, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, one thing I do not like is the fact that when you do this, you kind of just get, uh, you know, the, the music sound and it tells you that you have crashed, right? So we are now going to go nose down and we're gonna crash this Cessna. We can always start a new flight, but let's see what happens here. Look at that. You exceeded the airframe G limit and we have crashed and the aircraft is on fire. And if I look here, look at that. You have the aircraft in pieces and look at the some pieces gone all the way there that's probably due to the speed and now you can see the fire and you can see the smoke and this is something i like in explain not that i like crashing aircraft but you see you can see that the pieces have you know scattered all over the place not that i like crashing of course guys but what i wanted to show you here is again in uh, uh, the realistic nature of explain if you crash an aircraft, if you actually lose fuel, for example, or you have multiple engine failure and you are in an Airbus and you fall out of the sky or some, some whichever failure you have and you 
for that reason you actually crash, you are actually going to see a real crash. You're going to see fire and you're going to see the aircraft coming apart in pieces like we have witnessed here. And that is something I really like in X-Plane. All right. So let's go ahead and start a new flight. And uh, I want to show you something else with the Piper Cub. Maybe we'll take it to, uh, uh, is there a specific place in, all right. So I can take you to this airport. It's a very nice airport, guys, by the way, 11 Sierra. Uh, if you, uh, we're going to start here at the runway. So I'll just say confirm and start. And um, this is actually a nice airport to, uh, if you have a, a small general aviation aircraft, I highly recommend that you go to this uh, aircraft. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful airport to fly from. And it looks quite nice as well in, uh, in X-Plane. So we are in the Piper Cub uh, here at 11 Sierra. And what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on the master switch. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a donation for the Fly Lilo project. We're almost there at the target we set of 1,500 euros. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. I really, uh, truly appreciate it very much. All right, so battery is on. We're going to turn on the beacon. And we let's see here. Uh, master, why, why is there something? Yeah. All right, so uh, mixture is full rich. And let's go ahead and start it. There we go, we have a good start. Right? Now, if we switch to the outside, I'm gonna show you something in, that I personally like. Let me zoom in on the aircraft here. Right? Now, brakes are set. Now look, just notice the vibration here. You see that? By the way, this is default. Again, there is nothing added here. This is x default. And that is the kind of stuff I really like in x -Plane see here uh, again very nice the uh, the shadows here in this specific situation look very nice and you can see the exhaust system here you can see the smoke coming out and the heat layer and you can see the vibration there clearly and we have power see that all right so now I'm gonna ease off on the power and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the parking brake you can see again the movement of the tires here they are in sync with the aircraft speed. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hold one of the tow brakes and I'm gonna add power. And we're gonna see what happens. Again, the same behavior. I don't know why this wheel doesn't turn, it should. All right, so we've made the full turn here. And by the way, if you apply more power, so at full speed, the aircraft will keep spinning until you release the tow brake. All right, another thing I'd like to show you again before we take off is, um, let me see if I can simulate this here. I'll give it just a little power. And then I'm gonna hit the brake, see that? See that? Now you you saw the suspension there. Let me do this one more time. There we go. There you go. You see that? That's uh, I mean something I really like in in X plane. And this is again a default uh, default airplane. We're gonna take a look at the default ca uh, uh, cub in in Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. Yeah, the shadows are definitely nice, Phil. <clears throat> All right. So let's get, give it some power and let's see how this aircraft handles. Now this is a stall aircraft, short takeoff and landing aircraft, so I'm gonna give it full power here. Um, you can tell that I'm not very good with this aircraft, but here we go. <laughs> All right, so we are airborne, and uh, it doesn't take very much to actually uh, take off. And you can see now, uh, again, uh, the airport, default airport, 11 Sierra, uh, quite nicely done by Laminar and this is actually a very nice airport to fly guys uh, just by the way this uh, airport in Microsoft Flight Simulator looks absolutely gorgeous and of course we're gonna do it at, we're gonna go to the same airports in both sims uh, but this is the Cub now and uh, it flies really well I do like this aircraft now we have a look at the shadows here 
and you can see that in this specific situation the shadows actually look good but in some situations they look very jagged and that's one of the things I think Laminar has got to work on uh, without a doubt. Uh, overall uh, the experience in X-Plane is uh, when, when speaking of realism and speaking of the real so if you're about flight experience, okay, not the world, not the representation of the world, but the flying experience in X-Plane, uh, I, I think the simulator has so much potential, uh, but also offers you so much in terms of setting up a real world scenario, real world failures, how would you react? And if you want a training tool, this tool, if uh, x 12 is definitely something that will aid you in uh, in, in that purpose uh, in, in in actually training for real world situations uh, just simply because of the uh, of the capability uh, that it has in terms of representing the world uh, in terms of the weather uh, you know the flight model the physics as we have witnessed and uh, as well as the number of failures that you can set uh, you can also set up scenarios, you can set up combat, you can fly in formation uh, through the menu as I've uh, shown you in the beginning of the, uh, of the stream. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do one more thing and then we are, ladies and gentlemen, going to be heading to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want, by the way, we have, again, I just want to stress the fact that there are no add-ons running, no FS real, uh, XP realistic. I'm going to idle the power here on this cub. And I'm going to lift up the nose a little bit, and we're going to see how it behaves. And there you go, that's your stall. And I'm just going to push the nose down, give it full throttle, and recover from the stall. Uh, there you go. So uh, again, uh, it kind of it went to the to the right. Uh, I'm not sure if the cub actually tends to fall to the right or to the left uh, but that looked you know very realistic uh, uh, thank you very much Rand for the uh, info there um, so overall um, these are the things I like and dislike about x -Plane. just to say uh, again I do like a lot the failure system the camera system I like the ground physics the flight model and what I don't like in x -Plane is one is the uh, <clears throat> is the ATC is absolutely terrible. Uh, multiplayer functionality is definitely non-existent in Microsoft Flight in uh, X Plane 12, uh, which is something I think is a must in 2023 onwards. And I hope they start working on this uh, soon. Uh, again, their ATC system in terms of phraseology, by the way, it's okay, but it still needs a lot of work. I do like the uh, the graphics. Uh, they they don't bother me too much in X-Plane, um, to be very honest with you, because I think they are plausible. But of course, when compared to Microsoft Flight Simulator, they look very dated. Uh, and I, I'm not sure that, by the way, Luminar is ever going to change this, because again, their focus is really on the flight model uh, realism, not on the world in which you fly. They'll give you the you know uh, real weather uh, so that you can have very realistic experience flying, uh, but not necessarily uh, flying in a realistic looking world. And I think that is an area where Microsoft will always, always excel. And I don't think that, that there will be anything um, changing in that uh, between Laminar and, uh, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Again, very different focus uh, in terms of uh, flight simulation. Extremely different. Way forward for x -Plane. So, a couple of things I'd like to say uh, where I think, where I really like Microsoft Flight Simulator, not just as a simulator, but I like it as a community, okay? I think Microsoft and Asobo have been extremely intelligent in creating a buzz in the community for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today, if you go and you look at the content being created, everyone is creating a plethora of Microsoft content. Oh, 
here is up sim update 13 here's what you can expect in 12 here's what you can do and this is very smart because that is the result of the marketing effort that microsoft has done they're very powerful now they don't need to spend a penny you know they've got the entire community they've got all of youtubers you know everyone in the flight sim community creating you know uh marketing videos for microsoft um and and that that is perfectly okay i do like that about microsoft i do like how smart they think about these things and you know they have this uh, twitch channel uh for microsoft flight simulator where they go um, and and you know they have the uh, developer updates they have a, a community fly-in and that is something i do not like about explain they are very silent in this space and that is something that i wish that laminar would do more i know they started doing adopting a little you know kind of a different strategy lately they brought in swiss 001 so they start to involve the community uh, they are more active on their twitter on their social media um, so as a company uh, i have a lot of respect by the way for the guys at laminar and i will continue to support the platform these are just my thoughts guys by the way you don't have to agree with me but these are my thoughts and i think that in order for laminar to be successful they need to pay attention to those areas because sometimes uh, really getting everybody to know what the sim can do for you um, is is an excellent way of you know getting more people there getting more people on the is create a community create a community where i know a lot of the recent videos you know we have uh, we have austin meyer himself actually being the star of most of the video and the guy has a brilliant sense of humor and he's quite smart so i think maybe if they start creating something like that i think the community will uh you know they'll have more growth uh for uh, for uh, explain uh, they have got to do something about performance in the sim that's without a doubt and please guys at laminar fix your weather again the weather was broken earlier today uh the meter is not being loaded so they definitely need to do some some work uh, and he's a freaking pilot himself and aircraft owner. That is right, Carl, and welcome aboard, my friend. Glad to have you here with us. So, um, in all honesty, if I were to, uh, and, and by the way, uh, one of the, the great things about Explain also, before I forget, is the usability, the configurability, the versatility of the simulator, the way you set up your, uh, you know, your flights, the way you set up your controls, uh, how you navigate between the different settings everything is so concise the user is in mind when they created this and whoever is done the you know the user flows the user experience and the user flows is absolutely brilliant and I really give them a lot of credit for what they've done in this simulator and I wish them all the best all right so here's what we're gonna do now folks we are going to go to Microsoft flight simulator and to do this, we are going to, uh, let me see here. Uh, what do I have? All right, so I'm gonna put this on break and let me see here. Let me go and say quit. We are going to quit explain and we are going to start, uh, <laughs> don't mind that, that's okay. Uh, we're gonna start Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, the first thing I'll say about Microsoft Flight Simulator, one of the things I don't like, is how long it takes to boot the sim. It takes forever. Syncing data, looking for updates, starting the sim, this and that. Um, and that is just, it takes so much time and that, uh, you know, sometimes it's just, it's a put off for me. To be very honest, it, it's a put off when you have to wait that long. But once it starts, the fun starts as well. There we go. All right, so the sim is starting now. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> hey, James, how are you doing, my friend? Hey there, Stefanos, welcome, my friend. Glad to have you here. <laughs> That's funny, Carl. <laughs> All right, here we go. Xbox Game Studios. That's a quote from the Wizard of Oz for those they may not be aware. <laughs> All right, so um, 
<laughs> All right, so here we go. A Microsoft Flight Simulator is now starting, and it's going to take a little while. Uh, I hope that the uh, I hope that whatever insight I provided you with uh, about Xplane it was useful, and we're going to do exactly the same thing now for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and we're going to do the same test by the way. And again today, it's not this versus that, uh, guys. I want to stress this: that the fact that I'm not doing this to tell you Microsoft is better or Xplane is better or explain is more realistic or uh, uh, that is not the aim here the aim here is to show you the hopefully the pros and cons and i hope i was successful uh, in the first part of the stream uh, showing you everything about um, explain uh, <clears throat> um, uh, about explain that there is to see uh, there is, by the way, there are a lot of things that I did not go into detail in uh, in Explain. There is a lot more depth in, for example, the settings. But I just wanted to give you a general idea about what I like, what I think, uh, you know, both sims have done really well and where they lack. So we're just going to wait here a little bit for um, MSFS to start. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll begin the fun. Yeah. Hey, Fer Gomez! Hello, my friend! Welcome aboard! Glad to have you here! Thank you very much, guys, uh, by the way, for being here today. It's uh, so much more uh, relaxing when uh, I know everyone in the chat. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> so I, I think I know all of you guys, so uh, thank you guys for being here, really. I, I appreciate it. And we're going to have, by the way, uh, a lot more member streams uh, and uh, member content uh, in the coming days. Uh, this is just the start today, and uh, yeah, it's taking a little bit of time to load uh, the sim, so we'll just give it a little time. Yeah, you, you keep watching this bar as it starts moving. And by the way, the more you, stuff you have in your community folder, the longer it takes because it actually reads everything in the community folder, and it does this sequentially. And that's what I've noticed, and that can uh, can consume a lot of time uh, to uh, you know for for the sim to start but hopefully we're getting there now <laughs> hey Don how are you doing my friend welcome aboard James how are you doing my friend yeah I think I think it's a it's a you know for for a stream like this guys I wasn't gonna risk it really. Uh, I would have kept the moderators very busy, I think, if it was, <laughs> if we had a, you know, um, so yeah, that, that is a, a restricted uh, chat for members today. All right, here we go. Microsoft Flight Simulator, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, from, from the visual perspective, by the way, even the menu they have is a very nice menu, visually. Um, I. Personally, I think that while it is visually nice, it's one one of the things I don't like about Microsoft Flight Simulator is how many places you have to go to set things up. Uh, I like the fact, by the way, that they have a marketplace and that the marketplace is integrated within the sim. I wish Laminar would do something like that. This is an absolutely just a, a godsend feature in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, I do purchase things from the marketplace, uh, but my favorite place to purchase things is probably the sim market. Uh, that's because of history. I have a lot of things purchased there and Orbex. Um, you have your activities menu. This is again something I really like in, uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator a lot. Um, so again, if you ask me, the Microsoft Flight Simulator is very entertaining. So if you want to just go and do a flight challenge, you can. If you want to do flight training, similar to Explain, you can. Um, if you want to go and look at, you know, the latest airports and you want to buy stuff, you can. Um, it offers so much entertainment. Um, so from that perspective, I like I like this aspect of, uh, of Microsoft Flight Simulator a lot. Um, then from the profile, uh, I like the fact that you have your logged hours and you know my hangar, my logbook, uh, the content manager, 
Um, again, this is not, in my view, not a very user-friendly way of setting things up, but I can understand that they have a lot of features and you know the, the easiest way they felt to represent this in, in boxes. And they are quite large, so the fonts are very readable. So from that perspective, things look, you know, okay. And then you've got the options. Now, from the options menu, you have general assistance options, control options. Now, you get what I'm saying. Um, so one of the things I really like in, in X-Plane is how everything is set up in a very concise manner. Things are kind of scattered in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I still think they have done a reasonable job in uh, building a menu system and a user experience considering how many options are there in the sim. I think they've done a good job, to be very honest. For my liking though, I don't like to keep going to different places to set things up. I like things to be concise. Uh, sorry, let me go to uh, Lilo. There we go. All right. So. Um, so that's one of the things. Um, one of the things I do not like, or maybe I, I should rephrase this. I do like it, but I don't like it as much as uh, the way it's done in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, one thing I do like um, in in Microsoft Flight Simulator a lot, a lot more than I like it in in Xplane, is uh, the accessibility to the different graphics options. Okay. Uh, there are so many things that you can tweak to your liking to uh, get the you know the best out of the sim based on your uh, computer, and in in Xplane, you can't really do that to an extent. I mean, you, they offer you some extent of. Um, so for, let me let me give you the, the example of what I mean. On a on a medium or low end machine. Uh, with Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can still have a very pleasant experience with very nice visuals because you can tweak this so much. And the level that you can tweak is you have, for example, terrain level of detail. Okay, if I switch the look in increments of five, so that is something you cannot do with Xplane. Fly Lilo is in the house and just became a member here at the channel. Welcome to Private Pilot Fly Lilo. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for being here this evening. I appreciate it. Uh, good evening from Lilo and Roberto. Well, good evening to you guys. Welcome. Thank you very much for the support. So that is something I really like in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And everything is, you know, you can go a notch up the, the levels at which you can go either to the right or to the left is huge. And that is mainly done so that they can actually reach higher audience, audience with maybe low end PCs, medium end PCs, high end. Um, and I like, I really like the fact that they have all these options there that you can tweak. Now, what I don't like is the camera system. The camera system is probably the single most confusing thing in the world. Uh, the camera system, I, I've done, by the way, several tutorials. It is kind of, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's okay. But, you know, they've got this cockpit mode, showcase mode, external mode. In external mode, you cannot control the aircraft. And, and then you have to click something to, that is just too much, <laughs> okay? Uh, the sounds are okay. Uh, I, I like the sounds. Uh, the soundscape in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator is not bad. Uh, though I must say that um, uh, some of the sounds uh, in, Micros in in X-Plane are better in my view. Uh, again, I want to try to avoid as much as I can saying better or worse uh, because I don't want to compare the sims. Uh, but I like the soundscape in X-Plane a little better. Uh, I like the fact that you can have uh, an AI that works reasonably well in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is, I think, a must-have feature, uh, an absolute must-have. And I think they do it to an acceptable standard, in my view. I, of course, have it all turned off because I use FSLTL. Uh, but then uh, one thing I do like is the fact that you're able to have leisure boats, uh, road vehicles, ships and ferries, and they all actually move uh, like they should in real life. And you also have the representation of animals. And this 
actually is done so well in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it makes you just want to do those bush flights in Africa and, and just really get immersed in, in the flying experience and looking at all these, you know, fine animals in the sim. Um, I also find it difficult to understand where performance needs to be tuned, the sim and BDF. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's, that's true. I have watched Q8's uh, excellent videos on performance settings. Thank you very much, uh, Fer Gomez. Yeah. Uh, so this is something I do like. I like the fact that they've represented uh, animals because animals is an important part of the world. The representation of the world in Microsoft Flight Simulator is something I adore. It is just so immersive, so realistic. Um, it's just really brilliant. Um, again, you have a lot of things, you know, flight, uh, the data model, uh, flight model, beg your pardon, modern and legacy. Uh, you've got so many things uh, you can you can tweak. Accessibility is something, again, very important, uh, um, which I think they, there is a, a fair bit of this in, in X-Plane, but I think this is, I really like it uh, in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think they've done this very well. Uh, the developer mode is something I'm not going to go through uh, today in this. Maybe I'll do a special uh, video on this. Uh, VR mode. Now, by the way, VR in both uh, X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator is something that I have very briefly tested. And I have found uh, that the VR capability in Microsoft Flight Simulator to be far more advanced uh, than it is in X-Plane. But that's been just a, a, about a you know, a 10 to 15 minute test in both sims. So I might, I'm not, you know, I might not be speaking out of uh, experience, just on the first impressions. Um, and then of course, you know, you've got the replay tool, which I don't like in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I, this is something where um, it is really lacking. Okay, so, uh, so that is that. If I go to, I'm just gonna say discard, if I go to the assist options, now there is a number of things that you can set here. Unfortunately though, um, this is something where I think um, Microsoft Flight Simulator really needs to add a lot more uh, in order to, why do we, yeah. So the reason I've disabled crash, stress, stress damage and stress, because once this happened, it actually kicks you out of the flight. It will terminate the flight for you. Uh, unlike, you know, uh, where, what we've seen when we crash the Cessna, it actually crashes. You can see the fire and that is something. And the minute you actually exceed a certain G or stress the aircraft to beyond a certain limit, you know, you get that music and then the screen darkens says, ah, oh, you've crashed your flight. I hate that. And for that reason, I disabled all of this. In terms of sim failure simulation, uh, it's something that is underdone in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I think they need to add a lot more uh, out of the box to really bring this the, the flight experience uh, to a level where I think it's, you know, it's very realistic. Um, today, um, it is very rudimentary uh, to say uh, the least. And uh, I, do, I do like the fact that, you know, for the less experience or for people maybe looking for more entertainment, yeah, you know, you have good afternoon, Seska. How are you doing, my friend? Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have another donation for the Fly Lilo project. Thank you very much, guys, for your kind support uh, of the Fly Lilo project. Um, I like the fact that they've they've had everyone in mind. See, in in Explain, you can tell that the sim is built around the avid flight simmer or somebody who probably has some experience in aviation, somebody who probably wants to train. Um, but in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I like the fact that they have really addressed all audiences. Somebody who is an avid simmer, uh, you know, you've got some really very complex add-ons now for Microsoft Flight Simulator but also for those who just want entertainment, they want a relaxing time, uh, you know, they can set point of interest and you know, they get that little ribbon uh, while you're flying telling you where that point of interest is. That is something that I really like in a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, not for me, by the way, personally, but from the flight simmer perspective. Uh, and, and I'm talking about somebody who's probably new to flight simming, somebody who's just exploring, 
uh, you know, maybe that will spike their interest in flight. Um, so that is something I do like. They've got also the controls option. Now, <laughs> this is an area where I honestly think that they did not do it very well, uh, to be very honest. Uh, it is reasonable, but I don't like the fact that you can set the profile per control. That is something I don't like because once you set the, uh, you know, the, for example, if I set, I have now this, by the way, on the flight profile three, right? So once I set this profile, it is set for all the aircraft. It, it doesn't recognize. Whereas, you know, you've seen uh, what I, my preference is, is I can set the profile for all my controls and then take that profile and assign it to an aircraft or multiple aircraft, similar to what I've shown you in, uh, in X-Plane. I think that is something uh, that needs work. Although I must say it's done to an acceptable standard. I do like the fact that they have the visual representation. Again, you can see the buttons, but then there is no correlation here. It's just a visual representation. Um, so if I, you know, for example, click here, I have it set on the, uh, uh, on button 25 but if I go on 25 if you I hover over 25 it doesn't do anything so you kind of have to just kind of look here uh, and and do uh, a, a manual visual mapping between whatever you're setting and whatever is shown in the picture here which is okay uh, both uh, sims by the way have great support for a wide variety of flight controls on my J rudder, uh, what I've noticed is that the toe brakes do not work. I can only have the uh, the rudder axis working. Uh, it works okay in X plane, but that's you know nothing. Uh, it's just a matter of support. Uh, I think the J rudder is not something that is very popular amongst flight simmers, but I like them because they're. I feel that they're very realistic. Um, so uh, the in terms of the setup, uh, setting up. Microsoft Flight Simulator and the menu system overall is something I feel needs a little bit more work, uh, to be honest, to make it more user friendly uh, and, and to make it more accessible, uh, I think. But overall, a good job. Uh, I like, uh, you know, I, I overall, I like I like the user interface. It's just that some things are not very user friendly. I think some things can be done in a much better way. I think there is a mod on the flightsim.to that actually changes the UI and makes it a lot more simple. And that is a, uh, a, a very, uh, very popular download on the flightsim.to. All right. Um... Osama Muhammad, thank you very much for the uh, donation to the Fly Lilo project. I appreciate it. Guys, I appreciate it. All of you, you guys are very, very kind. Very, very kind, really. Uh, I really appreciate it a lot. What a great community. What great members. What great fine people here on the Q8 Pilot channel. I love you guys. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the, uh, to the fun stuff now. Now I have the uh, Cessna 172, just like we did in micro uh, in X plane. Uh, so we're going to take the same aircraft. Now one thing I do like a lot in Microsoft Flight Simulator is this: uh, is how you actually can look at the entire world uh, with a few clicks of your mouse. Uh, I really love visual representations. By the way, anything visual I love. Um, and now this is again when you see from two. Uh, normally, um, you know, I mean, that's okay. I mean, that's for flight planning. But if you look at all the serious flight simmers, they just select the departure airport. Everything else is done through the FMC or the Garmin device or VOR stations, and they don't really select the arrival. But again, kudos to Microsoft for putting everyone in mind. So if somebody's just starting with flight sim, they don't really know what the FMC is. They don't know how to use the Garmin device. You know, they can actually just do select departure, arrival, and everything will be loaded. And and, and that in, in itself is something I really commend Microsoft and Asobo for doing is really accessibility. Again, accessibility is very important in flight simulation. But again, the focus of Microsoft and Asobo is very different from Laminar. They're extremely different. The business model is different. And the target audience is obviously very different. So 
we are going to select uh, Darrington Municipal. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, uh, again, I love the fact that you can do this. Uh, you can, you have access to the weather conditions here, um, but that is pretty much it. Uh, so you can't really, um, you know, do an approach like a three nautical mile approach or anything like that. And by the way, if you guys like the like to do this, there is a plugin uh, called um, Instant Approach. It's by FS Flying School. Uh, I, I'm not sure what their FS Inventions. Sorry, the company is FS Inventions, and they have something called FS Instant Approach. It's an absolutely brilliant tool, and I highly recommend it if you want to practice your approaches. Uh, you can definitely get it for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I think there is a version for x as well. So, let's come here to the ramp, let's set it as departure, and let's say fly now. Alright, so now it's loading, and we are going to take a look. We've seen how things look like in, uh, in x -Plane, and now we're going to take a look at, um, at Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And of course, you will be immediately, you'll immediately see the difference uh, between the two uh, in terms of the visuals. Uh, another thing I like, by the way, uh, while the, you know, the screen is loading, you can see it says the stall speed of the Cessna. So it gives you information about the aircraft. Now here, ladies and gentlemen, you need to set we parking have... brakes to request ground services. All right, let's set the parking brake. All right, perfect. So now let me actually switch to the outside here and just show you. This is the airport. This is uh, Durrington Municipal in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is again a default airport and it looks like there is some snow and that is one of the first things of course I like about Microsoft Flight Simulator aside from the beautiful visuals is the representation of seasons. Um, I think the representation of seasons is done to a high degree of accuracy in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, you, when, when there is snow, you can see the tip of the trees here. Uh, in terms of representing the world, I love what Microsoft and Asobo have done. And this is one of the things that makes me really enjoy flying VFR in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if you look just around here in the world, as we go up, I mean, you see the uh, the beautiful clouds there, uh, the sky color, the mountains, everything's photoreal. The vegetation is uh, done quite well. And uh, you can see here, uh, let me just show you guys uh, one thing. Um, now, let me go to the season, just so that you see what things would look like in clear skies. So this is what things would look like uh, if we were not looking at real weather. Uh, this is, uh, again, very, very nice representation of the world. Everything is photoreal, satellite imagery. The uh, shadows are exceptional. Uh, the lighting system is exceptional. Uh, if we go here and change it to nighttime, here it takes a little bit of time, and then you see all the lights coming up. Uh, again, here you can see uh, that uh, the night lighting is done quite well. I love uh, what they've done here. You can look at the sky and you can see all the stars. Uh, very, very nice indeed. Let's switch this back to, uh, let's go to uh, real weather. All right, so live weather. All right, there we go. All right, so <clears throat> again, from, from the perspective of how the world looks, I think uh, Laminar has, uh, uh, Sobo and Microsoft have done a really good job. If we look at the actual 172, it's no different than what we've seen earlier in x -Plane. Again, very authentic representation, absolutely lovely uh, use of PBR materials. Uh, I mean, this looks, looks very realistic. Look at that. Uh, the aircraft look just so realistic and with everything else it just really brings the immersion level so high that it makes the experience flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator regardless of the flight model a very immersive and very enjoyable one. Uh, again it feels like you're flying in the real world when you are flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator and for the vast majority of those who like flight simulation, that is what's going to matter to them the most. 
Now, that's very different if you are a real world pilot or you're, you know, looking for your type rating and all that good stuff. That's okay. But if you are just looking to fly in something that very closely represents what you would see in the real world, this is the simulator for you without a doubt because nothing comes close. All right. So, Here's what we're going to do. We are going to start the aircraft. So let me turn on the battery and alternator. Now the switch sounds are OK. Now I think those are recorded from the real aircraft. They're OK. They're fine. Uh, I like them. Um, and we're going to, uh, the mixture is set. Let's make sure the, there we go. And we can Clear start. Clear prop. Ah, let me turn off uh, XP Realistic uh, because that's what we've done for. Uh, let me just go. You know what? Let me just close it all together. All right. So no XP Realistic today. All right. Nice sounds. And we have a good start. Let's turn on our avionics. Uh, now I'm not slow. You do taxi lights are on. Beacon light. All right. Excellent. And we have all the Garmin devices are now loading up. All right, let's switch to the outside view. And what we're going to do now is what we did uh, earlier. We are going, now the brakes are set. So I'm going to apply maximum power. Now, I don't see what I saw in X-Plane. Uh, let me, let me just, uh, all right, let me, I think this is better here so you guys can see. Okay. So what I expect when I give it full power, when the aircraft brakes are hit, I expect the forward of the aircraft to go down a little bit because the aircraft wants to move. And so the force of the engine should make the aircraft kind of, you know, just tilt a little down, downwards. It should point a little downwards. Let's do it again and see what happens. All right, I think it does happen. It does not happen as much as it happens in x -Plane, but I can see a slight change, but I think it should be more than that. Uh, with maximum power, with the brake set, definitely should be more than that. Yeah. So um, the the ground physics, by the way, in Microsoft, uh, uh, fly, the dip under the power. Yeah, to dip under power. That's right. Um, the, also, the struts should compress. Absolutely, absolutely, Carl. This is exactly what we should see. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, unfortunately, we're not seeing it. And by the way, the the ground the ground physics in in X plane are second to none. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll give you that. So here we go. I'm gonna give it one more time, just to there. All right. So nothing there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release the parking brake and I'm going to hold the tow brake and I'm going to give it power. And let's see what happens. So far, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. Let me try it one more time. All right. We're going to hold one of the tow brakes. All right, so it's not doing what x -Plane did uh, for sure. And what I would expect is when I hold the tow brake on one side and apply power, I expect the aircraft to use this as a pivot. Uh, so if I put apply the tow brake on the left, so the left then becomes as a pivot and the power, the sheer power of the engine should drive the aircraft forward only it's going to turn to the left uh, and this is not something we're not seeing uh, here with uh, even maximum power all right let's set the flaps all right perfect and we are going to release the parking brake and head over to the runway the visuals are just wow Again, by the way, this is a default airport, so we're not using any add-ons there. Uh, all default.
And it's a it's a bit it's a bit difficult to you know uh, manage the aircraft on the ground in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. But if you look here, guys, at this scene, this is just incredible. It looks so real. And that's again, that's what I'm talking about. And this is, I think, what draws everyone towards Microsoft Flight Simulator, because it does look a lot like the real world. <clears throat> and especially uh, for those, you know, flying, uh, you know, near their hometown, and uh, they can actually see their houses. <laughs> and and that's, that's something very cool. And uh, by the way, what people do normally in any flight simulator, any person, I bet you the first thing they do is go and type in their home airport to see what it looks like. <laughs> uh, no, no, it wasn't you, Rand. It's, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so here's here's uh, some really... In so the ground physics in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator is something I'm not very... You know, not a big fan of. Uh, but I'm going to show you here. All right. So we're going to... Uh, let me let me line up the aircraft again just look at how beautiful the world looks here at Darrington Municipal and uh, we are ready to go so uh, and uh, okay so one thing I again I really like in Microsoft Flight Simulator is you can see the snow on the runway see that see how this is and by the way I'm not using any add-ons I'm not using anything this is just really Microsoft Flight Simulator default Nothing is being used to enhance anything. Even XP Realistic is turned off. So, or uh, beg be your pardon, FS Realistic. So everything is turned off. Let's do enter and enter. All right. So here we go. We are going to give it full power. All right. Maximum power. Uh, the controls are a bit touchy. They've been improved. All right, we're gonna wait for 60 knots and then rotate. All right, 60 knots, rotate. Again, overall, a very smooth experience. Uh, another thing I really like in Microsoft Flight Simulator, by the way, is that it uses um, next generation technology with the NVIDIA DLSS that's uh, something I really like. Uh, so it's a very modern simulator that, uh, you know, employs the latest technology, uh, both in terms of satellite imagery, but also in terms of harnessing the power of the latest uh, graphic cards from NVIDIA. Uh, and that's something, <clears throat> that's something I also like a lot, uh, that you can do frame generation and, you know, you can really enjoy very high FPS with this uh, simulator in here uh, very very nice looking scene can retract the flaps and looks good again unfortunately uh, there is no flyby in the Microsoft flight simulator this is um, you know just must have for flight simulation but look at just this beautiful mountain ahead of us just really fantastic. Just really, really like. And by the way, the digital readouts in Microsoft Flight Simulator are just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I love uh, the uh, I love the details. By the way, there's Cessna. You can see how this needle is vibrating. <clears throat> and we can ease off here on the power. All right. So we're gonna do exactly what we've done in Explain. Is we're actually going to crash this. We're gonna go straight to the ground and we're going to see what happens okay so in explain if you recall we had the actual aircraft just scattering all over the place with smoke and fire all over the uh, airport vicinity so let's go ahead and do the same we're going to go full power and i'm going to go nose down Guess what? <laughs> the aircraft engines are still running. Now, of course, I have turned uh, turned off the uh, the uh, damage uh, because I don't want the sim to end. I don't want the flight to end. 
but in Microsoft Flight Simulator, if you have the damage, let, let's do it with the damage on, okay? So let me just go here. Let me bring up the menu here. We're gonna go to the, I believe it's under assistance options. And we're gonna go to failure and damage. Crash damage is on. Craft stress damage is on. And engine stress damage is on. Okay, so everything's enabled. Apply, save, go back and resume. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, but this time with all these features turned on. And this is one of the things I do not like, by the way, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Maybe this has changed, I don't know. I haven't tested this in a long time, but let's test it together here today. And let's see if I change my mind about their, you know, the damage system. So let's go ahead and go nose down and see what happens. Ah, there you go. What is that? I mean, come on, Microsoft. <laughs> Uh, that is a feature I absolutely hate. Uh, it says you overstressed the aircraft and caused critical damage. Well, well, let me see it. <laughs> so you can uh, you can restart. All right, let's go back to the main menu. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load up the uh, the Piper Cub at uh, 11 Sierra, similar to what we've done with uh, with X Plane. So let me go to the world map. Uh, we're gonna select the Cub which is right here. Uh, this is the Zlin Aviation Savage Cup. So that's different from the Piper Cup, I think, that we've flown in X-Plane. But that's okay. Uh, uh, 111 11 Sierra. And it already put us on runway 8 for departure. So let's do that and fly now. All right. Now, I think uh, we're going to perform, by the way, the same test uh, again. Um... That's what mine does. That's the wing coming off. Yeah. That wasn't even impact. Yeah, it actually does it before. Uh, Carl, what has happened in that specific example is the we overstressed the wings as we came in down because of the speed with the nose down. So I think we actually crashed. Uh, we, we didn't actually reach the point of crash, but because I've turned on stress uh, will cause you know damage. That's what has happened. It, we've overstressed the wings. All right. So uh, so now we are in this cub in uh, 11 Sierra in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And again, guys, I really like the I really like the scenery here. Uh, I think it looks fantastic. I do like, by the way, the airports uh, better in the the layout of the airports is more realistically done in X plane. But the visuals in Microsoft Flight Simulator is just second to none. This looks amazing. Very, very nice. All right, let's go back here. All right, so before we fly, uh, we are going to perform a few tests. And we have the parking brake set. Now we've noticed the vibrations on the, uh, on the airfoil in X-Plane. So let's see here. I'm gonna give it power. Uh, parking brake is not set so let's set the parking brake all right here we go all right so if I give it power I will expect the Piper Cub to do something but it's not we can see some vibration of the airfoil ah now we can see something there there we go all right so we can we can definitely see what we wanted to see all right, uh, let me now hold the toe on one side and give it power. And let's give it just a little bit more time. And let's see if it starts moving. It wants to move, but it should move. With all that power, it shouldn't be doing that. The minute I release the toe, then it goes. All right. So again, the the ground physics are to be looked at. All right. So that's that's what I'll say. It's uh, not very realistic in my view. But let's go ahead now and take off. We don't need the runway. That's fine. 
And this is an immediate nose down. I'm not sure, by the way, if the real aircraft does this immediately. Uh, but this is a stall aircraft, so that's what it's supposed to do. And I do like how this aircraft flies, uh, to be honest. Uh, one of the things I like uh, in uh, in, X in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is the, the simulation of turbulence. Uh, I think it's done to a you know reasonable extent I think uh, again immersive it is immersive you see that movement there uh, again it it gives it that sense of realism it gives it that sense of immersion that you're flying uh, up in the air and uh, I do like the fluidity of the sim uh, a lot and uh, I like how the aircraft fly uh, just Aside from the fact that it's realistic or not, uh, I just like how they fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator, whether it's realistic or not. Um, and I think the simulation of the turbulence is is not bad. I like I like it overall. I like how it flies in in both sims. Really, I think it's done uh, it's done quite well. I think the difference is very subtle uh, in in the flight model between the two. I think there are, for the casual simmers, by the way, uh, we're not going to feel the difference. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I know there's so much talk about, you know, the flight model and how the aircraft. Now, on the ground, I will tell you right off the bat that uh, X-Plane is second to none. X-Plane 12 is second to none. But in terms of actually the flight model, I think if you're not a very experienced pilot, in very certain situations is where you're going to be able to tell whether the flight model, you know, is accurate or not. They added realistic terminals. Yeah, I do have that. So if we go here, just I'll show you real quick. If you go to the assistance options and if you go to piloting, is it? Yeah, so turbulence is set to uh, realistic. And uh, by the way, let's go ahead back uh, here and disable those because I just don't like what they've done. Uh, with the failure system. So overall, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I love the fact that the whole world is represented and it looks very realistic no matter where you go. The trees, the mountains, some areas are better than others, but overall, the world is simulated very well. The representation of meteorological data in the sim is absolutely gorgeous looks very realistic as you can see here i do like the rain effect uh, in x-plane a lot better by the way i think it's much better uh, in terms of simulation we did not show this in this live stream but i do like it a lot more uh, in x-plane than in microsoft flight simulator but overall the representation of meteorological data in the sim is done a lot better in uh, in x in microsoft flight simulator from the visual perspective uh, it's done much, much better. Uh, that's one thing I definitely like about Microsoft Flight Simulator. I also like the variety. So if we, uh, you've seen all the laminar aircraft, but actually if we go here to the main menu in Microsoft Flight Simulator, there's uh, also an abundance of uh, default aircraft, especially if you uh, elect to purchase the premium deluxe uh, version. Uh, if you go here, and uh, if we click here, uh, again, some of these are payware, but uh, I, we can note, uh, let's see here. Do we have, we can select a Sobo here. No, you can't. Uh, all right, so I'll just point them out real quick. So for example, the, uh, the Baron, not, not this one, but the regular Baron, uh, this is the Blacksware Baron, uh, is by default there, the bill model 407. Uh, you've got your, uh, 747, the 787, the Airbus A320, uh, this little Cirrus 22 is, uh, is there, uh, the, um, uh, you've got your, I think, uh, the TBM 930, the Diamond Aircraft, uh, DJ Aviation, so a, a wide selection of, uh, aircraft, again, available by default in Microsoft Flight, uh, Simulator, so, um, and uh, one thing I'd like to show you guys is uh, I want to go to all right. Let me let me just go see you here. Uh, today in Kuwait we've had uh, terrible terrible weather, uh, very very strong rain, 
And so let me just uh, bring the aircraft. We'll bring something a little more suitable. Um, maybe. Uh, so this is the regular Baron. Um, let's see. All right, let's let's bring this. All right. Stay stage work. All right, fly. All right. <clears throat> so um, so this is one of the things. The representation of weather. The representation of the world is one of the things I really like about uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I like the fact that you can, there is a lot of point of interest and they modeled quite well. Um, uh, I can't get my Thrustmaster rotor pedals to work properly in the MSFS, they work fine in XP. I, I've had, by the way, the same issue with my rotor pedals. Uh, Gaber, welcome to Private Pilot, my friend. Welcome aboard, glad to have you here with us and welcome to the Q8 Pilot exclusive family thank you very much Gaber for uh, yeah, becoming a member uh, to private pilot and uh, this is uh, yeah so let me just say ready to fly and uh, this is by the way not the current weather in Kuwait I will tell you that this is not accurate <laughs> yeah, maybe it will take a little time to, to load I don't know but that's not the current weather in Kuwait right now uh, it is absolutely terrible Ah, it looks like it's fog. It's showing fog, but it's actually raining uh, like crazy. We've had hail today as well. Very strange. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, let me just release the parking brake and let's go. So, uh, so yeah. So I I do like the variety in uh, in X -Plane, in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I do like uh, the representation of the world, the uh, the weather, the representation of weather. I do not like their menu system, not one bit. Uh, I think it, it, it needs a lot of work. <clears throat> it's not very user friendly. They've got things scattered all over the place. I think you can see the turbulence a lot better now. Um, the um, Again, setting up your flight controls uh, can be very challenging in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is something I feel they need to improve on. Uh, I. I still feel that the failure system in Microsoft Flight Simulator is not mature and I think it needs uh, a lot more work uh, to simulate uh, flights realistically. Uh, let's just do clear skies there. All right. Um, but overall, uh, if, if you ask me um, what else do you like about Microsoft Flight Simulator, I really like the multiplayer system in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's really a platform that brings all of us flight simmers to enjoy our most favorite... Ooh. There you go. What happened here? Not sure what, I did, what I've done. This is uh, the JP Logistics Cessna 152. All right, we're just gonna crash. Okay, all right. Look at the landing rate, and yet nothing happens, huh? Yeah. All right, let me start uh, just to go to another flight. Let me go to the main menu. Um, I do like the multiplayer system a lot in Microsoft Flight Simulator because I think it brings all of us in one place and uh, it's quite fun to do that. Um, they are just brilliant in, uh, by the way, if you guys want me to go to a specific place, let me know. Um, by the way, I have something coming up for you guys in the days to come. Um, <clears throat> out of fuel, even in Kuwait. Uh, yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't paying attention really to the fuel gauge. Uh, what are the nice airports? Let's go to Stewart airport. How about that? Yeah. It's probably snowing there, but that's okay. Uh, let me select something else here. Uh, tail dragger? No, 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 no. We don't want a tail dragger. Uh, Pacific Aerospace? Yeah, why not? That's not, by the way, that's not a default uh, aircraft. It's a payware aircraft, but yeah, let's load it. Why not? Um, but um, I really hope for a more advanced failure system in 
Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I think, by the way, in terms of the flight model, I don't think it's far from X-Plane, to be very honest. Uh, in a lot of situations, I find uh, I find them very close to one another, uh, with the exception of the ground physics, uh, where X-Plane just really excels. And there is a situation where I think Microsoft does better, which is the side slip. Um, especially if you do this in a Cessna, you'll be very, you can very easily detect uh, how well it's the side slip is done in in uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's it's done okay in X-Plane, but I think it's done better in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, with X Enviro 2022, even better clouds. Uh, oh really, Gaber? I you know Magnus uh, from uh, from Threshold was telling me that X Enviro was doing really well. But I haven't really tested it, so uh, I can't really vouch for it. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and take off here real quick, and uh, I'll give you my concluding remarks. All right. So, folks, again, this was not a X-Plane 12 versus Microsoft Flight Simulator, but rather I hope that I've showed you from my perspective at least what are the pros, the cons, and the way forward for both sims. Now, the way forward for Microsoft Flight Simulator is, again, something I really like about Leminar is the fact that they continuously uh, publish their roadmap. They let the community know what's coming. They build the hype for it. And that is absolutely brilliant. Both, by the way, it's, it's, uh, it serves two purposes. One, they keep you informed. Uh, you know what's coming and they build the excitement behind it. Uh, but also, I think it is useful uh, for us to know what's coming and it, it will keep the competition on their edge that, oh, they're going to do this, so we better do that. Uh, so in my view, in my view, Microsoft Flight Simulator is a platform that is fast nearing. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a platform that is very fast nearing maturity. Okay, whereas Explain still has some of the basic elements uh, requiring maturity. Uh, now, Explain has been there for a very long time. It's a platform that is brilliant, and all of that is fine and dandy. But there are things that have been issues with the platform ever since its release, maybe in Explain 9, 10, 11 and still on this day until this day in x 12. And I think that they really need to speed up the, uh, the, the development life cycle. They need to speed up the improvements and they need to bring about new features. I love the fact that there is a development roadmap for Microsoft. You go and read about World Update 13. You can go and read about all the new stuff, all the new airports that are coming, all the new aircraft. Uh, we've seen uh, unprecedented uh, adoption from the community for Microsoft Flight Simulator. One of the things that made x very successful in previous years was the active community. Uh, the freeware aircraft, the freeware scenery that we've seen. And we have even more of that now for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So many very well done aircraft, scenery, tweaks, applications, um, and of course, the support from third party for both sims, uh, SimBrief, uh, Navigraph, all of those are, you know, supported very well. Um, but overall, there is a shift in the community and the development community towards the Microsoft platform. I think maybe it's not just, by the way, it's not just about uh, an easy platform to develop for, but I think it's where the masses are heading. And the reason the masses are heading there are for two reasons. The average flight simmer is not really, doesn't really know the difference between, oh, accurate flight model, accurate physics. The average flight simmer wanna fly in a world where he feels immersed in the experience. And of the two simulators, I must say that Microsoft Flight Simulator is the one that offers that. Explain does not offer that, not in the least uh, way. 
What x does offer, however, on the other side is an experience, a, a very realistic flight experience. If you want to set a, 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 for example, a failure scenario, and let's say that you want to fail your engine 15 minutes after departure, and maybe this is something you want to actually test in your type rating uh, in a 737, uh, and that's something you know that your instructor is going to do. That's something you can go very easily and simulate in X-Plane. If you want to do it for your Cessna, no matter what you want to fail, you'll find that feature available in X-Plane. And so the focus there is on the aircraft, on flying, rather than on the world around you. But is that what people are looking for? I mean, the same question is asked when I see so many developers developing, for example, a Piper. And, uh, you know, uh, it is a uh, compare contrast thing, not a one is been absolutely, absolutely, Carl. I couldn't agree more uh, with you. Um, thank you very much, Fly Lilo. Appreciate it, my friend. Um, it is absolutely not that. Um, I think they offer different things. And this is what I keep saying on my streams when people ask me, which sim do you prefer QA? And my answer has always been, I enjoy both sims for different reasons. But I'm gonna say this, guys, to, to complete the thought that I started with, is that the flight sim community is a huge community. It is comprised of very few real world pilots and very few very experienced you know, some CF, uh, uh, CFIs, for example, and a very large community of those who just want fun entertainment. They want a fun flight. They want to be able to get in an aircraft and fly to maybe their hometown or go to the Statue of Liberty. And Microsoft Flight Simulator is a platform that allows them to do that. Not only that, but if you want to have fun, you probably want to have fun with your friends. And Microsoft is a platform that offers you the base for that. It gives you a very powerful multiplayer system that allows you to bring all your friends, fly with them in your absolute favorite location. You can do fun landings, you know, you can do challenges together, and you can really have a good time. Explain fails to do that because it is not geared for that sort of thing. But where is the mass market? it's definitely going to be in the Microsoft Flight Simulator pro platform uh, for those reasons that I mentioned. I hope, guys, that in this live stream I was able to show you exactly what I like about each sim. And by the way, in terms of add-ons, in terms of uh, payware add-ons, there is just as many uh, you know, good aircraft for Microsoft uh, uh, just as good as, as I explained. So we're definitely seeing the likes of the Phoenix, the Leonardo software, the Just Flight BA-146, the Black Square Baron, uh, the Bonanza, uh, the Phoenix A320, uh, the PMDGs of the world. Uh, definitely a lot of very high fidelity aircraft. Of course, uh, I cannot forget the Cessna Chancellor, the Blackbird uh, Cessna 310, and of course, we have again very high fidelity for X planes, such as you know the MD11, the tallest lineup, Flight Factor. Uh, we have some very excellent GA as well, such as the Airfoil Labs, and many the Reality Expansion Pack also. So uh, definitely, both sims have a fair amount of very high fidelity um, aircraft and scenery add-ons, uh, which makes them both great in my view. I hope that I was able to... Pip, welcome to Private Pilot, my friend. Thank you very much for your support and welcome to the exclusive family here at the Q8 Pilot channel. I hope that this was an insightful and useful stream, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that I was able to provide you with an insight as to why I like Microsoft Flight Simulator and why I like Explain. I hope throughout this live stream I was able to also provide you with some of the features that I felt that were very well done in both simulators and some of the ugly parts of both simulators as well. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I will bring this live stream to a close. 
I want to thank very much all the channel members for being here and I want to welcome all the new channel members for being here. You guys have been great support uh, to the channel and thank you very much for your donations to the Fly Lilo project. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for tuning in and bye-bye for now.